Hello everybody, so today I'm going to be talking about wallflowers. So you may remember, I think it was the uh, last video I put up and I went shopping at home base and uh, I showed the lovely collection of plants that they had there, one of which was the wallflower. And um, it was in my mind, shall I buy one, shall I not? I didn't at the time, as soon as I got back I thought, yeah, I would have liked one. So anyway, I went back today and purchased one. So there you go. So we've got a hardy wallflower variety bowls mauve. And this uh, the other name for this is Erisimum linifolium glaucum. So there we go. Now I'm very happy with this purchase actually. Five pounds for this. Good price in my opinion. Good looking plant there. Lovely flowers. Um, when I was shopping there, there was a chap there watering the plants, so to me that indicates, you know, there's a degree of plant looking aftering going on. It looked very, you know, just looked like a nice display of other plants, and I felt the moisture, you know, a nice bit of uh, moisture around the compost in the pot, so I'm very happy. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, put the old, uh, a bit closer so you can have a look at it. I mean, look at them lovely beautiful I mean look at the lovely colour of them flowers I mean I'm so just it just looks absolutely gorgeous I mean that price as well five pounds I mean considering the care that has gone into bringing this uh, plant to the pot so to speak you know a lot of effort's gone into it and you know it really really looks nice and I just think five pounds for this very very good well, it's almost an investment really we'll get more to that a little bit later on so let's have a few facts about wallflowers, shall we? Made some notes on a piece of paper here. So, they have won, this variety has won the, <clears throat> excuse me, Royal Horticultural Society Award of Garden Merit. They like poor to moderately fertile, neutral to alkaline, ideally alkaline and well-drained soil. So you're looking at a pH there of about seven to nine, okay? If your soil is a bit acidic, you could maybe consider adding some lime. So pH of about seven to nine, you'll be about right for a wallflower. Now this is very important, okay? They are tolerant of drought. Now if you remember last summer, certainly around here in the southeast anyway, in the UK, we had a period of time, it didn't rain much to speak of for about three months. I mean, some of the lawns went brown, you know. And um, so maybe we need to start thinking about, you know, plants that are more tolerant in, you know, what could potentially be drier climates in the future. Who knows, but there we go. So they are described as a short-lived perennial, okay, means enduring. So maybe, you know, about three years, maybe you'll get from one of these or a biennial, which means like a two year lifespan. Now, speaking from personal experience, a friend of mine has had several of these over the last few years. And um, you get like one or two good years, then the third year, they'd start looking a bit rough. And then after that, you know, they can just they could just die really or go all scraggy leggy and they don't look very attractive at all so yeah you get about that amount of time from them and this variety in particular Bowles Mauve was named after Edward Augustus Bowles who is a British horticul was rather a British horticulturalist and if you trim them lightly after flowering you can help to prohibit the plant from becoming leggy so yeah so the coastal garden you know basically with regards to thinking of where this plant would fit I mean I'll pick it up again but you can just see how versatile this plant is one thing that really contributes to its versatility in my opinion is the fact that um, it flowers for such a long time maybe even from say depending on weather of course February until September October you know you should get at least four or five good months of flowering out of one of these per year and I think that's very good so if you th take a look at this and if you think about um, you know where this could go you know some people have stated you know in the cottage garden um, in a Mediterranean garden some people say uh, you know on the edge of borders in the middle of borders wherever really just a very very versatile looking plant I think so anyway it almost looks a bit lavenderish doesn't it and um, so these are native to all sorts of places Europe Asia I believe parts of Asia the Mediterranean so and that would indicate you know 
its drought tolerance being native to somewhere like the Mediterranean. I mean, there's so many different types of wallflowers. I mean, you really want to do a bit of research on them if you want to see the sheer variety. I mean, hence the name wallflower. You know, they have been seen growing in walls, in like little bits of loose mortar, you know, in walls and stuff. You get a flower like that. So, you know, very, very tough in their own way. So, yeah, certainly a nice idea in that regard. I mean, you can imagine it in a rock garden or, you know, say like... Have you got some shingle, maybe not shingle, but a nice gravel sort of done garden. You can imagine one of them in the ground or in a pot. It'd look very nice there, wouldn't it? You know, with water features around. And I think you you know what I'm trying to say. So they attract, well, they're said to attract butterflies and hummingbirds, okay? And think about that. Butterflies, well, we love butterflies. I mean, maybe that's something to do with the colour. Think of purple buddleia, you know, butterflies like that. Maybe that's something to do with this. I don't know. So hummingbirds and butterflies love them. And, um, you know, apparently so do slugs and snails. So, you know, that's not such a good thing, but we'll find out, won't we, maybe, about that. And they are a member of the cabbage, the brassica family. So that's very intriguing. And, um, yeah, so described as a sub-shrub, which is a short, well, as you can see, a short woody plant, or a herbaceous perennial, or even an annual, you know, use it for one year, this, I personally wouldn't do this, but use it for a year and then chuck it away and put another one in the following year. You know, that's not my bag, I'd rather get as much out of these as possible. So beautiful, but uh, you get the idea. Now, um, if you think about it, or maybe you, maybe you haven't, but you can take cuttings from these. About this time of year, that might be a subject for another video. I might consider doing that. So if you think, yeah, okay, five pound investment, you think, oh, well, the plant's not going to last, you know, maybe won't last three or four years. Well, okay, imagine if you took cuttings successionally. So this year, the following year, you get you get the idea. You keep taking the cuttings, and then before you know it, um, you end up with, uh, you know, a lifetime supply of wallflowers that you can share with your friends, isn't it? And do swapsies. Gardeners love swapsies, don't they? So yeah, anyway, so that's a bit about the wallflower. So with regards to, yeah, that's enough of that sort of thing. I don't really like doing that, but otherwise I'd forget to say a few things. So what I'm going to do is grow it in a container, okay? Because I don't have more room here. Um, I haven't really got a part of the garden that's suitable to put that in and I also think that uh, <clears throat> excuse me, many people will be growing them in containers as well because gardens nowadays don't tend to be all that big do they so I'll show you the way that I'm going to be growing it so I'm going to tip the old camera down there look and so that's my pot it's going to go in that's the wool flower itself that's my water that there is a bit of normal garden soil okay that one at the back is just a bit of old compost I want rid of and I've got some multi-purpose compost there okay so they like as I stated well drained soil okay so I don't want I don't particularly want it sitting in comp you know wet compost so I'm just gonna do that in there I can't do it like that I've got to uh, tip the little camera down and do it there you go I'm sure that uh, this isn't particularly fascinating for some of you, but we'll do it anyway. So there we go. Whoops, a bit lame, wasn't it? No, I'll, I'll keep it in. Right, so there you go. We'll put that in like that. Right, so a bit of the old... Right. There we go, bit of the old drainage there. And to assist with the drainage, what we are going to do is chuck some stones in. Okay, like this. There you go. Running out of room here in the polytunnel. I need the weather to improve. If it's warmer outside, I can then get some of these runner beans in and just a bit mentioned a light frost again so I've got to be careful I don't want to go around losing stuff so a bit of the old drainage stone in there okay I'll just check you can see what I'm doing still right so now I'm going to put up now these like full sun okay wallflowers they can tolerate a bit of shade but all in all they like you know they do like full sun okay I'm going to put some of the old garden soil 
in the bottom there, look. Just, uh, well, they don't need particularly amazing soil. Garden soil is good. It also helps with drainage. You see it's got to stone in there as well. It gives it a bit of body. We will like a bit of body. A bit more in. Why not, eh? And that's it. Right, a bit of this old compost that I want rid of. Get some of these roots out. Those. So let's get the wool flower out and we will have a look. So there's your wool flower there, pop him out. Right, good root structure. Now one could say that you know this is a bit compressed and it will just sit in the pot when one puts it in the compost. So what I'm going to do is just gently prise it out a little bit, not too much. I don't want to be too over, over the top OTT with it, but yeah, yeah, look at that. It's nice and moist. It's definitely been well looked after this plant, and I'm very happy with it. Right, that'll do. Right, tip, tip, and Z the old camera down. You can see it, can't you? Yep, there we go. Right, so let's have a look, see what it looks like. Oh, that's going to look lovely in that pot, isn't it? Very happy. Right. I'll put a bit of the old multi-purpose compost in. Like an amazingly clever person, I decided to come out here in my jeans. These are actually a pair of jeans that I don't normally wear for gardening. I don't know why I'm wearing them now, but never mind. The passion of the wallflower obviously took over. Right, that goes in there. Look at that. Oh. Now, because I'm mindful that these don't want to be sitting in wet wet compost too much. You know, they they want a nice bit of moisture. They don't want sodden wet, so to speak. And <clears throat> I know that there's I can feel the moisture in the compost that the plant is sitting in. So what I've done, you know, well, what I'm going to do is not water it, which goes against all sort of natural instinct, but. Uh, I don't want it to be overly watered. Maybe I'm being overly fussy. But I want my wallflower to do well. Because I have wanted one of these for some time. And one good thing is, yes, although one may not have the biggest garden, the advent of container growing enables one to grow things in containers. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Push that down, push, 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 firm. Nice and firm. Nice and firm. And these lovely green leaves. Obviously the flowers go in the winter the colder months, but the greenness stay. So you've got like a little evergreen, you know, feature. Yeah. So, one thing I will be doing with this, in order to keep the sort of alkaline of the soil is I'll be putting some wood ash around it as and when I uh, you know, have the old fire on 
put some wood ash around because uh, wood ash can be alkalining or alkalizing. I always forget what the word is. So I mentioned before, we could, if your soil is a bit too acidic, you can add some lime or some wood ash if you've got some. You know. So yeah, there we go. So that's my wallflower, and lift it up. You can just imagine. the huge versatility of a beautiful sub shrub like that because you know lovely color isn't it and you can just keep taking cuttings year on year and as i stated you know, all the different gardens i mean that'll even do well in a sort of step toe look good in a step toes yard garden like mine if you don't know um you know step toes yard what step toes yard is uh, look up look up step toe and son okay <laughs> You'll soon know what I mean. But uh, yeah, so, you know, it, one always thinks, you know, or can think, what do I need, you know, for my garden or whatever. And I think, you know, you want a nice long flowering flower, probably in many ways you won't do, won't do better than that. Okay, if you like my work, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. Any comments, questions or what's it, post below. See you in the next video. Okay, so this is where mine is going to go, at least for the time being. So you see I've got a little bit of a gravel there, of a membrane under it, and uh, you can see the wallflower, obviously, there. I've got my two clematises, uh, one of which I purchased, I think it was this one, I purchased a few weeks ago from, um, it was either this one or this one, from Aldi's, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, they're both done well. Coming to the end of the sort of flowering period now, but I do love this is nice sort of flower vine there as well and here I've got my little rose now I was given this rose okay someone asked me to dig it out for them on a job um, and they said they, they were gonna have they were gonna throw it away so I turned around and said can I have it and they gave it to me and it's done very well in this pot here and you see I'm starting to get a nice flower coming out there so yeah don't let it uh, stop you, you know. If you don't have massive space, but yet you still want to have beautiful flowers and shrubs and bloody blahs and what's it, you know, do it. Tubs are great for this sort of thing. Obviously, you've got to be, you know, ready to water them, though. But I can feel the sun on my back here, which will be currently hitting the, uh, what do you call it, the wallflower, which it will love. Okay, then. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and I might have a little beer tonight. Take care and speak soon.